uh, big oral question exam, endometrial and uterine cancer. Endometrial and uterine cancer. So, of course, it's obstetrics and gynecology, and let's go. Take your pen's papers to make the notes. So, endometrial cancer is the most common malignancy of the uterus, originating in, in the endometrium, the inner lining of the uterus. It's often referred to as a uterine cancer. Although, technically, technically, it refers to cancer of the endometrial lining. What about causes? Endometrial cancer has a strong association with estrogen, with estrogen, which stimulates the growth of endometrial tissue. The most common type are endometroid and adenocarcinoma, which is an estrogen dependent. Dependent, estrogen dependent. About risk factors, so endometrial, endometroid, uh, endometrioid. Endometrioid, like uh, endometrioid can, uh, carcino, adenocarcinoma, endometrioid, endometrioid adenocarcinoma, which of course is estrogen dependent. About risk factors, hormonal imbalances, prolonged estrogen exposure without progesterone, for example, in hormone replacement therapy or obesity. Obesity. Increases androgenous estrogen levels due to, uh, due to fat tissue aromatizing androgens and estrogen. Age. Most common in postmenopausal women, average age 60. Newly parity, women who, are, who have never been pregnant. Diabetes. Increased risk due to metabolic changes associated with insulin resistance. Family history, Lynch syndrome, hereditary non-poliosis colorectal cancer syndrome, which increases the risk of endometrial and other cancers. Yes. So risk factors, hormonal imbalance, uh, prolonged estrogen exposure without progesterone, obesity, because obesity increases endogenous estrogen levels due to fat tissue, age, uh, the aromatizing androgenous into estrogen. Yes, so I repeat it. Obesity increases in the endogenous estrogen levels due to fat, tissue, aromatizing androgens into estrogen. Age uh, in postmenopausal women, average age 60, nulli parity, women who have never been pregnant means nulli parity, diabetes. Of course, no increased risk due to metabolic uh, changes associated with insulin resistance. Uh, family history uh, about Lynch syndrome. Pathogenesis. A no post estrogen stimulation leads to hyperplasia and endometrial lining. Over time, the hyperplastic tissue may undergo malignant transformation, leading to carcinoma. Type 1 endometrial cancer, estrogen driven, most common. Type 2 endometrial cancer, estrogen independent, tends to occur in older women and it's more, more aggressive. Clinical presentations, no symptoms. Uh, abnormal vaginal bleeding, uh, most common symptom, especially in postmenopausal women. So, abnormal vaginal bleeding. Uh, heavy menstrual bleeding in premenopausal pre women, pelvic pain or pressure, late stage symptoms, postcoital bleeding may also occur, vaginal discharge in advanced cases may be watery or uh, blood tinged. Diagnosis transvaginal ultrasound TVUS. TVUS, TVUS. So this transvaginal ultrasound is used to assess the endometrial thickness and endometrial thickness greater than 4 or 5 millimeters in postmenopausal women warrants further evaluation. Endometrial biopsy, gold standard for diagnosis. A sample of the endometrial tissue is taken for histological evaluation. Dilation and curatage, DNC. DNC is a dilation and curatage. In cases where biopsy is inconclusive, DNC may be performed to obtain a sample for analysis. Hysteroscopy allows direct visualization of the endometrium and target biopsy. Staging 
CT MRI used for staging and determining the spread of the tumor. Pelvic examinations to check the, uh, for local extension or metastasis. About treatment. We have surgical treatment, adjuvant and follow-up. Surgical treatment, total, his, total uh, hysterectomy, which bilateral salping of all forectomy, removal of the uterus, fallopian tubes and ovaries. Lymphadenectomy may be done if there is a suspicion of lymph node involvement. Adjuvant therapy, radiation therapy used postoperatively if the cancer has spread to the pelvic organs or if high-risk features are present, for example, deep myometrial invasion, chemotherapy for advanced or metastatic endometrial cancer, cisplatin, paclitaxel, cell, paclitaxel, etc. Hormonal therapy, progestins, for example, medroxyprogesterone acetate, no progestins, may be used in patients with estrogen receptor positive cancer, particularly in those who wish to preserve fertility. And follow up, of course, regular pelvic exams, imaging, and biopsies are needed to monitor for recurrence. Uterine sar sarcomas, though less common, uterine sarcomas. So endometrial stro stromal sarcoma, leomyosarcoma are a rare type of cancer originating from the mesenchymal tissue of the uterus. They tend to have a poor prognosis and may present with more aggressive symptoms such as rapid tumor growth and bleeding. About prevention, obesity management, the, the gold standard, decreased risk by maintaining a healthy weight and managing insulin resistance, hormonal therapy for patients with increased risk of endometrial cancer, for example, those on estrogen replacement therapy without progesterone, using combined therapy of progesterone can help reduce the risk. Screening, there is no routine screening for endometrial cancer in the general population, but Women with Lynch, uh, Lynch, Lynch syndrome, Lynch, of course, or family history of endometrial cancer should undergo annual screening. For example, no endometrial biopsy. So while endometrial cancer is the most common uterine malignancy, it's important to note uterine cancer includes both endometrial carcinoma, most common, and sarcomas, which have different clinical behaviors and treatment approaches. So if you answer in this manner, in this way, largely sufficient for your excellent mark. Don't forget to follow and subscribe Dr. Y, YouTube, ch YouTube channel, WHY, Dr. Y, like question, Y. As well as don't forget and follow, subscribe my Telegram channel, Dr. Y, where you